Hi, I'm Donna from Scenic Roots right here in Sandwich and we are at this garden today and I want to talk about summer tomato maintenance. I'm sure by now you have already seeded your babies, your babies have grown, you have put your tomato seedlings in the ground and now it is time to pay more attention to them. It's not just put them in the ground and forget them. This is the time you really have to start paying attention to your tomatoes whether you want to or not, but it's everything to do with monitoring. Every time you go out and water your tomatoes, I want you to take a look at them, look under the leaves, see if there's any holes, see if there's anything broken, see if there's anything eaten, see if there's discoloration. That's called monitoring. Um, I like to do that every time I go out and water because um, my eyes are always on them once or twice a week. Um, another thing is pruning, maintaining, staking, tying them up to uh, a tomato cage or a garden stake and then um, watering is very important and then fertilization so we're gonna get right into it so um, here in this garden we have some already established tomato plants but I want to show you how to prune a tomato one of the reasons we prune a tomato and I mean by pruning I mean by thinning out so you don't want a big bush of a tomato that invites pests and it invites disease. Diseases, fungus, um, the tomato can't breathe, it doesn't have the right aeration. So um, I will show you on this one, if you can, what we want to do is we want to take out selective branches and we want to take out some suckers. Um, so if we look into this guy, you want to take off any side branches. So here we have the notch here and you have another branch already starting to come out and this is what you want to pinch off. You don't need those. You have plenty of branches coming. If you look here, we already have a big strong one already started, but I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to take that out too. So if you methodically go through and start thinning out any of those little suckers, this also makes for a stronger plant. So if you have a big bushy tomato, your plant is trying to give all of its energy to the outward branches instead of performing and trying to produce fruit. And you don't want that. The more fruit, the better. So another thing I wanna talk about is early flowering. This is kind of uh, having a seven or an eight on a blackjack table. You don't know what to do with it. You're in the middle ground here, right? So. Anytime a tomato is flowering, when it's young, you want to pinch those flowers off. We're about the point where I'm still going to pinch these off because your tomato is supposed to get about five or six feet. You want to continue the growth and the strength of the tomato itself. You don't want it to start setting fruit right now because then in the heat of the summer and the stress, it's going to stop flowering and it's going to stop producing. So we are next, we're going to snip off all the flowers and you're going to look here even at the top branch we have some flowers coming here so i'm going to snip those guys right off okay so those are two things that you can do right now for maintenance on your plant to slow down the production of fruit you want them to get stronger and bigger and healthier before they set fruit so another pruning tip that also helps with keeping diseases at bay is getting rid of maybe your bottom two or three branches on a tomato because every time you water or when it rains that water splashes up and then that will also invite disease it splashes up any fungus that's residing in the soil or any debris that's underneath your tomatoes that splashes up and comes right onto your tomato so we always trim out the first couple stems of leaves these branches here so you have more aer aeration from the ground up so if you can see on this one, I'm gonna trim off these three or four right here. And you have your first like four, five, six inches and you have back a stem. And that's really important to do. So one of the other things that's really important is when you're monitoring, you're looking for holes in your tomatoes. You're looking for any um, anybody who's eating, you're looking for any other um, discoloration in leaves. There's a lot of disease for tomatoes. 
early blight, late blight, uh, leaf roll, those are things I'm gonna talk about a little later in this video. And then you also have aphids, white fly, and the dreaded tomato hornworm. Um, those are very popular in tomatoes. So because we've been out in the garden multiple times a week, or because you are monitoring your plants where you're inspecting and you're looking, every time you come out, you're just looking to notice something different. Well, what I've noticed here in this garden is that there is eggplant planted within the tomatoes. And the flea beetle is very prevalent in eggplant and potatoes. And this is what they do is they make lots and lots of tiny little shotgun holes in the leaves. So what else did I find? I found it on the tomatoes. The tomatoes that are closest to the eggplants are being attacked by the flea beetles also. So these are the things that you also wanna look for when you come out into your garden. The four tomatoes behind these two aren't getting attacked, but these two are. So what do you do? You use an insect repellent, an insect killer. Um, one of the things I like to recommend is obviously you're using chemicals on your vegetable plants. Now these are the vegetables that are you're going to be putting into your mouths. So we do highly recommend any organic product that you can. Um, there's a lot of products out there. There's neem oil, there's insecticidal soap, there's spinosad, a lot of your um, hardware stores and all of your local garden centers carry these. So it's up to you with what you want to use and what's easiest for you. A lot of them are ready to use sprays, concentrates, or a hose end sprayer. If you have a lot of product, a hose end spray is something nice to use because you can attach it to your hose, mixes the water with the um, insect repellent, and then you can just spray your plants. So totally up to you, but I highly recommend you go and speak to somebody at your local garden centers or hardware stores and see what they recommend and what's best for you. But when you see something like this, you want to act on it immediately. Now, these eggplants can be saved. Um, we will apply the insecticide and we will trim off these leaves and allow the new ones to grow. Plants will continue to grow. Just trim out the bad, trim out the dead, trim out the eaten and then they'll do their job by growing and producing fruit for you. So I wanna to talk to you about watering your tomatoes. This is not how we water our tomatoes, right? We don't spray overhead. Where are your roots? Your roots are down here in the soil, not up here. Very important to water the ground where your roots are. If you are on a sprinkler system, see if you can shut it off and hand water with a hose or a soaker hose with your vegetables or see if you can change the projection of your sprinkler by over hand watering your tomatoes and literally any of your vegetables again that encourages diseases to spread because you're splashing the water and your leaves don't get a chance to dry and really how much water do you really know is getting into the soil and that is the most important part so water the ground by hand if you can at all possible moments this is really important um, vegetables especially tomatoes it's recommended that they get an inch of water every week so i would go out with my hose and i would soak the ground until it puddles and let it seep in and then i would do that one more time i do this twice a week um, other ways you can tell if it rained, if you have a rain gauge, a lot of people don't. So a lot of times it's just by experience. If you're not sure if your plant needs water or not, stick your finger in the ground. That's the most common thing to do and it's free. You don't need these gadgets. You don't need um, the weather channel to tell you. So I stuck my finger in the ground and it actually is really pretty dry. So we're gonna soak all of these tomatoes and if it doesn't rain this week, in about four or five days, we're gonna come back out and soak them again. I wanna take a couple minutes and talk to you about animal damage. Um, we work so hard and spend so much money on our gardens and a lot of times our produce and our flowers are decimated by groundhogs and rabbits and deer 
This is a prime example of what can happen. A groundhog got into here, and the reason I, I say it's a groundhog is because it was fenced. I, there was a, a real hard attempt to keep critters out, but it's only a two-foot fence and very flimsy bamboo. So the groundhog, when he comes up on this fence, the weight of the groundhog pulls the fence down, just like this is exactly how I found it, and then he crawls in sits right on top of these peas, munches away. He has stripped all the length of these beans. Now, I think, in my opinion, they are salvageable because underneath where he was sitting, um, there's a lot of great growth under here. So I would advise the owner to just trim them back halfway, trim out all the, the um, eaten stems and the leaves and restake and start fresh. Now I want to walk you over to another garden of someone who um, has some really good fencing techniques that I want to show you on how to keep those critters out of your gardens. So here we are at another garden and this they are incorporating a lot of different techniques to keep the groundhog and rabbit out and one of the things is that their fence is a lot taller. So they're going with the four foot fence. Um, this is much better where rabbits cannot jump over groundhogs have to crawl up. So groundhogs can climb, but what they've done is that they have bent their fencing forward. So as a groundhog comes up, the fence bends back with the groundhog and then he can't get over your fence. Um, another technique that they did do is that they did cut um, the fencing so they do have spikes. That's one owner's technique, but really just bending your fencing over towards the outside of your garden should be enough to keep them at bay. One other thing that they have done is down at the bottom, they double fenced. So they have this two by four garden wire fence. Down at the bottom, they have chicken wire, which is a two by two, two inch by two inch. I'm sorry if I want to explain a little better, two by four inch and a two inch by two inch mesh. So they've doubled up down at the bottom so no bunnies can get through no baby bunnies can get through the bottom of the fence. So these are a couple techniques I just got myself stuck to. These are a couple techniques that you can use to keep the groundhogs and rabbits at bay.